Hey everyone, welcome to Mr. Telly Studios. I'm Jeff Castanon. and welcome to another No Pause video reaction and analysis. I am so stoked today because I get to check out a new one from one of my favorite artists who goes by the name of Skeb. This is his new song and video called Not Important. And um, this, boy, I'll tell you, um, please, if you haven't checked out my reactions to Skeb's music, please go to the playlist and check them out. And then also check out my interview with Skeb. Um, I'll tell you, man, I started listening to him a, a little while back last year. And um, his music completely floored me. I became a major, major fan of his music. And then I was lucky enough to actually connect with him. And um, we did an interview. And then I m met him when I was out in Barcelona because he lives out there. And uh, we just became really good friends after that. And we keep in contact all the time. We chat all the time. I've asked Skeb to come back on the channel. So I'm going to watch this. I'm going to uh, react to it. I have been holding back from watching this. It's been driving me crazy. I can't wait to see this. And then uh, Skeb and I are going to chat about this right after. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into this. Here we go. Let's hit that play button. Skeb and Tosh. I want a Skeb and Tosh. <laughs> so cool. I love that early Apple stuff. Jonathan Lumberg uh, on drums. Another amazing musician. Funny the things I do. Crave the moments I can be alone, yet somehow expect love from a distance. Though change was struggled through, now every motion seems to feel control, but only when I relax in. Check out that bass part and the drums together. Not <laughs> important. Very cool video work. It's so strange the shit we do. Feel emotions that are so oh my God. but the words haven't called yet. The velvet voice will sing as we swim through the noise, the answers. Mm. Not important.
Genty, Genty. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that is so enjoyable. Let's see what that is. <laughs> this camo <laughs> is here. Beastly, Jonathan. Man, oh man. The man. <laughs> I thought I was going to hit empty trash. <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, this is just so up my alley. I mean, this, this is this kind of stuff I love. Um, not to mention that it's got a video game theme, which is, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of video games and uh, from, from ever since I was a child, I actually got into, um, being a software developer because of video games. And then I actually wrote video games at some point in my career. I, I won't go into that now, but, um, Oh my gosh. Um, holy smokes, man. I love that. And, and I just want to start off before I get into talking about the music. I just want to, I want to emphasize something that really, really appeals to me. And that is the, the, the combination of, the humor and the not taking yourself too seriously and the tongue in cheek kind of play that we have going on and the incredible talent that comes through in the music. It's no joke what they're doing. It's very sophisticated. Um, you have to have a high level of musicianship to pull this stuff off. So, you know, I love the marriage of humor and then, high high talent you know that's why i love dirty loops too because you know they do the same kind of thing they don't take themselves too seriously but you know when they get on their instruments they absolutely demolish everybody and <laughs> slay the room so i love that about this i love that about skeb and and um you know uh he's got a great sense of humor as as you'll you'll find out in, in a little bit here but um the intricacies going on with the bass and the drums with Jonathan Lundberg is just it's such a fantastic amazing drummer um he's having to play like this really bizarre bass figure that's going on and I'm listening to him play it and he's just nailing it man you got to have some some chops to do that you know and 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 I I just love the fact that Jonathan could do that with ease and um you know, uh, Skeb, you know, obviously picks the right, picks the right guy to, to work with. But, um, 
that whole thing that's going on, you know, the underpinning of of the complexity of that and the beauty of that and the beauty in complexity of that. And his voice, which I I so, so love that high singing with the long notes, the softness to it, juxtaposed with the killer uh, you know, music that's going underneath that even gets really, really aggressive. And that combination balances so, so beautifully. All right. So, um, yes, uh, I'm going to bring him on and we're going to chat about this more. So hang on. Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. oh, dude, it's so great to be able to uh, see you face to face. Uh, you know, it's always yeah. Fun connecting with you through the messaging and 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 the voice exchanges that we have, um, but it's good to see your face. I um, likewise. I set so I sent you the link to my reaction. So many questions that I have about it, and <laughs> and your and your process of of um, coming up with this thing. But first off, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the lyrics because. As I'm listening to it, I'm hearing little gems here and there. Where were you coming from when you wrote those lyrics? And was the music something you did at the same time? Or did the lyrics come first? Or tell me a little bit about that. Ooh, oh my gosh. The, an <laughs> the, answer, the answer to whether the music came at the same time or after is, is yes and no. Because mm. like... Uh, um, I initially uh, that that song has been like on the hard drive for a long for a while, and uh, yeah, I actually yeah. Um, um, I I did a demo version of it, and it was completely different to this version that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a I I was like this during like the COVID era, I yeah. call it, and as we yeah. call it, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I I had the song. For a while and i had like the verse for lyrics and then i sort of decided uh that i'd try and experiment and i did this thing i, I had this idea where it was it was all gonna be me so i was playing cajon so it was cajon instead of oh. drums and it was kind of like an acoustic vibe right and it was it was st still electric guitar but like a clean sound all the way through oh wow and and uh, and then i was a bit like underwhelmed with the result mm. um and uh and, I, and uh, because I was really determined, I did these like lyrics for it. And I really like tried very hard to make these lyrics as good as possible because yeah. uh, it's not all my songs that I post my lyrics because I'm not always that proud of oh. them. Like, you know, <laughs> right, right. Like, um, so, um, but these ones I was, I was, I was pretty proud of because uh, um, like I tried some things where I don't know, you probably no noticed like the chorus has this thing where the sentences kind of cross over, but still has a meaning. It's yeah. something I love like hearing other artists do. Right. But yeah, so basically, and then, and then that stayed, that demo stayed in my hard drive for a while. And it was a little bit like, so I'm glad you're saying that because it was a bit like, I was like, man, it's a shame. Cause mm. I was like, these are such good lyrics. And I was, in this sort of frame of mind at the time where I was thinking like, man, if you can do a song with good lyrics, if you've got good yeah. lyrics, like you, you can't let that go. You, you've got to do something with that. Totally you agree. Know? So, um, so, and then I kind of realized that it was a good opportunity to, I was like, okay, well I can do, so I, I'm, I'm a musician, right? So I can arrange the music around the lyrics, which is something I've always wanted to do rather than, uh, do it at the same time or before do you know what i mean like yeah. write music and right. then try and come up with lyrics on time right right like so i've done both but it allowed me that because the willingness to do it again gave me the opportunity to really arrange it properly around ah. the lyrics and the melody right you know what i mean right if you so, were to sum up like um just the the gist of it what what would you say if you just kind of had to give like a couple sentences regarding the sentiment of it could you do that fucking no <laughs> how much time do you have <laughs> <laughs> because um, it's such it, it, it is it is such a profound concept and one that i um 
relate to personally as well. So I'm like mm -hmm. curious to know where your head was at regarding regarding this as what's important and what's not important. It's a very, oh, yeah. very deep, you know. Um, okay, let me think. Um, I think it was, you know, probably at the time, so I wrote these lyrics a while ago. I, I actually maybe the chorus. The chorus was a, a little bit of like maybe thinking of like kind of inspired by like uh, Zen philosophy. It doesn't say anything about ego, but in, you know, if you have no ego, if you have like an ego death, then you kind of get to a point where you realize that like stop. You know, you don't have to worry about, you're not concerned about the past anymore and you're not concerned about the future. And and this is like a way, yeah. a way of trying to be uh, present, which is such a yeah. complex and paradoxical yeah. like frame of mind to get into. Because yeah. if you're going to, if you just start thinking that you want, you want to be in the present, then you, you've already like, you're already not in the present because you're sort of stuck right. in your own thoughts. Right. So right. it's right. it's like a, it's it was supposed to be a play on that. Yeah, Just, you know, that that kind of thing. I, I had to start with that because that really jumped out at me. And um, yeah, man, great job. Great job on the lyrics. I, I, Thank uh, you. Right off the bat, I am tickled pink because you've got, you know, this old Apple computer thing <laughs> going on here, which, you know, this this is near and dear to me because I started off as a software engineer for... Um, Macintosh for for Apple products and that's that's how I started off so I had those old shitty Macs like you know those super super low powered uh things when they came out um but you know at the time they came out they were you know a marvel but um yeah. so it, it was fun to see uh to see that come back what what puts you in that like frame of mind and to go in that direction of of wanting to use the the old uh um Apple computer for, for the video? I mean, first of all, like, I'm very aware of my limitations when it comes to video <laughs> editing, as much as I love it, you know? Uh, um, and I think, like, honestly, I started with a different idea. I tried doing this thing initially where it was like a scene of, like, uh, me, a character, who's kind of like uh, depressed doing his morning routine uh -huh. and kind of uh, just, you know, so it like went with the lyrics sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just wanted to create some sort of monotonous routine sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I kind of, in my head, I was like, it looked all like cinematic and everything. And then when I did it, I remember I showed a friend of mine and, and she was like, she's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, with that reaction i was like oh yeah that is yeah this is <laughs> this is not going well yeah and then i showed her and you know a couple a few other people like the i had this idea for for some time actually of like uh making myself into a a, a video game character right with a you know with a video with a like 2d yeah. wide aspect ratio background yeah and uh that you could just scroll through yeah and like um and I and I showed that, and then she just went she she went crazy. She was like she's like that is so cool. And like uh. some other people, some other people said, and a few other people said that. And and like um. So the two D side scroller video game won out exactly. over the the high tech yeah. uh, three D modeled uh, yeah yeah render oh, tessellated yeah, yeah, yeah. models. <laughs> yeah, and it's like uh, I I had that I did that first. I did like this thing where I was thinking this could be cool at the end. Yeah. The video. Yeah. I was thinking because that part of the song kind of, I, it's kind of eight bitty in the music. Yeah. 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 So I was thinking, okay, this is a moment for like some retro video game stuff. But and then everyone who saw it was like, that should be the whole video. Oh. And I was, like, oh. And I was a bit like, ah, oh, but you know, that's that's a lot of work and everything, and that's gonna take me. <laughs> that's gonna take a lot of time. <laughs> and then I thought about it. You should and, do you should do this as the man yeah. who doesn't have to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But then but then I just then I thought about it to myself and I was like, no, nah, it would be really cool. And then I figured out quicker ways of doing it and everything and you know, which is you know, it's it's I mean this video was like a learning curve for me as well, uh with some editing things. But um So yeah, you did so... all the did you do all the animation? You did all No 
Oh. No, 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 no. No, it's like it's like partly AI. So it's like partly mid journey. Okay. And and then uh me it's just i'm just like because i had again like i said i had the idea for a while i was like uh I remember realizing that i if i film myself in front of a green screen yeah um and this was i i think i had this idea like just when mid journey just came out oh so said, wow you know, and it wasn't necessarily for this video mm -hmm. you know i had the idea so i had the idea for a while so like and you know use like a pixelator plug in on final cut or something like that right uh, but then when kaiba came out i was like oh i can actually make myself look like an 8-bit character pretty easily oh right? wow so so i did that so so um so yeah so then so then it wasn't it wasn't too bad it was just the keyframing that took some time sometimes but then so then long answer so then i come back to the beginning and it's like okay i have to have a like a retro computer Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that didn't really come. The, the concept of kind of an eight bitty video game that became solidified. And, and then you're like, okay, well, like now I have to put this on an old uh, computer to, exactly. to kind of match the fact that it's, yeah, that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, and, and it's quite telling, isn't it? Like how sometimes you just, you only get the ideas in the process totally. as as cliche or cheesy as that sounds it's just like you know i did i there are times when i you know i'm like planning of how i can do it because i'm almost scared about right. what i'm gonna get myself into because right. once, usually when once i'm in i'm just in it's, you know I'm, I'm like gone for days you know and I, you know, i'm kind of obsessed over it but right yeah right. really it was just like yeah yeah, it's it's uh it is interesting just the creative process of of that you don't even know where it's going to go. You know? No. It's it's yeah. like you start with these ideas and then it kind of uh has a life of its own and drives itself to completion and then you're like, "Okay, well I guess that this is this is where it wanted to to go." So uh yeah. you, you know, you, you you know, as long as you get to the finish line, which is uh, can be challenging sometimes uh especially for something like this because it's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work and you gotta, you gotta just keep coming back to it. And, and, uh, do you ever, do you ever like in the creative process, whether it's doing a video or even working on music, do you, do you get to a point where you're, you're tired of it? Like, you're like, uh, I've, I've, hit, I've heard it too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, when I'm doing a video, I like, I like pitch the song like differently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's exciting again you know? yeah to make it exciting yeah. again yeah, so, oh actually this is pretty good yeah. oh my god dude. yeah i'm quite proud of this yeah yeah so um uh and i've taken you know i took i did take breaks on it i took breaks to do like i don't know mm. i think there were some points where i had some gigs to do so i'd like I'll be oh. going to Stockholm or whatever. And then also doing other music as well in between kind of right. help, helps a little bit, you know, right. a little bit sing. And then when you come back, you're like, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to get I, I can easily like spend quite a long time on, you know, on the same thing for a while. Um, yeah. Not burn out on it so much. I mean, that's, that's something I think you do develop over time is, uh, repetitive, being able to listen to it over and over, having that repetitive uh, listen and endurance. Yeah, you know, for sure. Especially if you're an engineer or, or a producer or something. That's that true. It, It's like you have to be able to look, keep listening to it. Yeah, sometimes um, I have to watch it because I write as I'm mixing. I'll write and mix. So I'm, I'm constantly mixing it as I'm writing and I'm using you know, the DAW to write in. And mm -hmm. it, one of the dangers is that you start getting tired of hearing it. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to add a little keyboard part it's because you want it fresh. Oh, yeah. So you keep yeah. adding stuff because yeah. you've heard it too many times. And by the time you get to the end, you have like a Peter Gabriel song, which is like a 50 instruments right. <laughs> going on. And and so that's something that you actually have to be careful of. It's be It's much better to walk away take breaks uh you know then to work on it uh you know 12 hours a day for a week and then you, you know because it'll start getting it'll, it'll start getting boring to you and you start to fill in the gaps you know that's just an interesting phenomenon that happens so um 
A lot of breaks help, I guess. I think so. Yeah. I think the breaks. And then, uh, and then, like, uh, uh, like the, you know, the the rewards you get as you're doing it, especially with like when I'm putting the visuals to it. When I do like this thing where the visual like really fits with it, then you get kind of get this reward. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh yeah, that looks yeah. so cool. Oh yeah. Thing. So you and then you get happy and then you carry on and then. You know, and then yeah. there'll be some bottlenecks, you know, of course. Right. Where you'd be like, oh, damn it. Like, yeah. <laughs> where's this going sort of thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that scene where you're in that um, that game mode there and then it explodes and then you've got these, you know, colorful triangle things that just kind of explode. That, that little area, yeah. that little part of the video is so, so cool because it's just like unexpected and then you got all this color that comes up and and it's at the right point in the music and the music yeah. hits at that right point. right 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 yeah. yeah 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 i remember like showing i remember just having half the video done and showing my my friend that yeah i was like that's so cool yeah and, like hearing him say that would just made me feel like oh, yeah 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 it's pretty cool isn't it and, and and yeah and that's like uh that's that's again like manipulating ai like manipulating kaiba which yeah. um yeah and and uh i remember it's it's funny because like for this video I, I was being a little bit careful because i did a video for um no name faces mm -hmm. uh, where it was like completely AI and I still like manipulated it a lot like you know changing the speed and mm. reversing it and make, making it match certain like still images mm. um but uh uh and uh, poor Morgan because Morgan like responds to all the comments but there are a couple of comments who are like really <laughs> negative oh uh, the AI thing like naturally you know because that's of just, course like I'm you know totally aware and I'm ambivalent myself towards AI you know yeah so uh so with like with this one, after experimenting with that, I was like, it's cool to use it as a plugin sort of thing. Yeah. Like if I if you can think of like, so I can take like the still image of me and Jonathan and then kind of tell AI to go to say like, go all trippy and make right. like geometric shapes and stuff. Right. You know, so I can use that for a second sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather use it like that than use like a use it to generate a whole video sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, because you know I fear it's funny because when you told me about Kyber some time ago, I jumped on it and started playing around with it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing tool. But then I started seeing a lot of videos that were co completely done with Kyber. And it's yeah. got a certain look and feel. It's identifiable. And I, yeah. I just got a little worried that if I used it, that next year <laughs> people are going to go, oh, you, uh, everybody get jumped on the bandwagon. It's no longer yeah. in fashion anymore. And that's, you know, just kind of a, a pin in the timeline of technology that people used. And, and, yeah. You know, and I, I was afraid of, you know, having a video that would be, you, you know, um, just a cliche of the technical time type of thing. Yeah, but, right. But if you use it like you're saying, uh, that's a great way to use it is use it sparingly. Just use it, you know, in certain spots. Then it's not, it doesn't have such a big fingerprint of yeah using yeah. kyber you know yeah and it should allow you it, it makes me think as well if you can use it as a tool that it should allow you to go further you know what i mean like mm -hmm. that, that was like the very first thought i had when uh you know when ai started coming out and there were all of like these discussions and everything but i was thinking like you know if you're a really creative person like i, I can already think of like telling ai okay like create make this I don't know, insane rhythm. I say I've got like an idea or concept for a crazy, just out there right. rhythm. Right. right. Um, I can get like, I mean, we already kind of, I mean, a lot of composers do that anyway with like MIDI and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, what would happen if I just had this like uneven rhythm? Let's see quickly how it sounds like if you just copy yeah. and paste it and then yeah. put like a backbeat. Absolutely. That, that, I feel like that's, that's a form of AI. 
Yeah. And but you know, but then if you just stop there, it's not that interesting. Like you want to develop it in some kind of way. So that's where the like philosophy of like having a if you're having a conversation with the technology, mm -hmm. then it can be interesting. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, as artists, we use technology. We, it, it, no matter what time period that you live in, uh, that you yeah. create in, you're always using technology. You're using whatever technology of the time that is available to you. So, you know, it, it's it's silly to think, you know, oh, I'm I'm not going to use something because, you know, uh, it's cheating or, uh, you know, um, it's not completely organically coming from my brain. Well, I mean, we've been using technology, you know, all along and, you know, people can make that statement at any time and period about whatever the technology it is, even though we believe that technology is now primitive. You're like pitch correction. I mean, that was a huge one. When that started happening, yeah. that was a, that was a major, major deal that people were griping about pitch correction and oh, it's going to ruin this and anyone can sing and you don't have to be you don't have to practice you don't have to be a good singer and there's always yeah. going to be people who abuse it and people who know how to use it and that's yeah, exactly. and that's the thing is that it at the end of the day it's still a, a tool you make the decision on how it's used and where to use it and how to use it so you know it's it's still not eliminating the human process of of making decisions on how to use the tool you know yeah absolutely not i mean it's such a and 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 it's one of those um <laughs> it's one of those topics you it's not worth getting into an internet debate on because you'll just right. end up in a circular argument sort of thing <laughs> so, totally because it's like i could go i could i mean this this might be a little bit like uh like overly pedantic but you could keep going with that and say things like well the guitar uh, and a piano they're like you know because once upon a time we didn't have equal temperament right and actually you had all these like really creative people figuring out the best way to have a tuning system right you know right and it's like and now we're cheating because we have like this approximated <laughs> tuning system that can go into any key you know we can <laughs> we can go up a half step easily when man people back in the, they had to think they had to use their brains you know <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Oh so, my God, it's you true. Can go on and on. Yeah. So, um, uh, no, I think it is very, um, it is very interesting. Uh, for some reason, it popped up in my in my mind as well. You know, I think about like I don't know, like, but I was told this anyway. I'm not hundred percent if it's true, but Bach was would have like traveled like quite a long distance to try out like the first organ or, or the, not the first organ but like this new organ or you know that's been uh -huh. that's been made just just like oh. uh -huh. you know, imagine that you know like nerding out on the you know because it's like the first synthesizer right essentially you know right like the fair people. light it's like the fair light of the, yeah, of the right, day right. like oh my gosh the technology is just off the charts you know yeah, yeah. oh my god i i really like um that percussive thing what what, what were you playing like a little oh, yes, bongo the, the top blow. oh that yeah. sound is so cool yeah when that came in i was like oh that is so sweet um is that just at the beginning i don't recall if, if that persisted through the rest of the song or it's, uh, was... it's towards it's towards uh, it's, it's on the second it's on after the first break as well okay okay yeah yeah it comes back in yeah that yeah, that yeah. just added uh man that's so cool that just those little elements that you add and i know from our interview a while back a little bit about how your brain works and and the insanity <laughs> that you that that you have about sounds and how important that the sounds are to you and and that to me is what keeps your music so damn fresh and interesting is that you take the time to you know make decisions about um you know sonically what you're gonna have you know in there so it's like yeah i'm gonna have a tabla in here because that that's that's seems right to me that feels right to me yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna have this in here you know um so you're 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 very very in tune with with um the sonic aspect of music, not just the technical playing part of it, but also what things sound like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. That adds a yeah, lot. Yeah. 
I didn't think too much about that one. I was just like, oh, I've got the tabla right. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Fucking, let's go for it. Yeah. But in in hindsight, it was probably like a variation thing because if you, yeah. um, oh yeah, I posted the demo the other day, by the way, um, you know, just to see what people thought. But then the other day, uh, um, my uh, we've got some like friends of family over. My dad's mm. wife was like showing friends like, oh yeah. You should see, you know, Seb's Skeb's uh, music, and she looked up like non-important, and my demo came up as the first oh. thing. So I've, I've, I've unlisted it now because I was like, no, 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 that's not the right time. That's, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> no, no, I don't want, I don't, want, I don't want it to be the first thing. Oh it's my god. Like this, this inter interesting like oh yeah look this is how it was and now, anyway but like um no it's private now it's marked private yeah now, now yeah yeah it's, it's not it's unlisted if, if oh it's unlisted pe people who want to find it, it you'll be able to find it but like that one it was just like and again it was i think i was thinking very much like i don't know I was, maybe i was being a, a bit rigid but i was just thinking like yeah this is going to be like a performance video you know mm. so i'm gonna mm. oh. be playing cajon all the way through sort of thing and right um and then i kind of yeah but the tabla thing is like it's interesting because you know it, it switched up it switched up you know yeah you've got you got it come in for a little bit and it's a bit of ear candy yeah and it's, it's early so too it's early too, which which I like that because it sets you up. It puts a big question mark as to what's coming up, because mm. you typically typically don't hear a tabla come in within the the first few seconds of of any songs unless you're listening to indie music, you know. Oh, so it's kind of sure. like, oh, oh, sure. oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, I've got to say because we are on the internet. It's not a tabla. Was I oh. calling it a tabla as well? It's a darabuka. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta get, we gotta get the right, uh, yeah, because I'm sure someone's gonna come in. Right <laughs> should we, should we redo that whole part? <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can ask you again what it's called, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, um, yeah, so you have like, uh, there's a section like the big nasty section where it. It, it's kind of a genty type of thing. Um, are you slapping on your, are you like thumping your guitar, like to get that sound? Are you picking to get that real aggressive? Uh, it's, it's like, um, uh, I tried different things on that, but like the initial technique is like, you, you, it's like you tap, okay. tap, pluck, tap, pluck, and then tap on another string, pluck. Oh. Yeah, open string. So it's tap, pluck, Pluck on a different string, tap on that different string, pluck with your thumb, back on the string that you were plucking and tapping before, and then pluck in this case on the open G string, if you know what I mean. Uh, you, you don't have to use your middle finger there, you can use your index finger if you want, like that, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I didn't know if you were doing a thumb slap because you've done that. I've seen you do that on guitar before, like a bass player would. The, oh, yeah, yeah. This thing, you know. But I can't do, I'm not good at the slap and then up, up like up. a toast and a bassy. The yeah, up like, is can't, hard. Can't do that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and that's the thing I got from a dear friend of mine, actually, who, who's a drummer, and he used to, and he, he he like plays guitar as well mm -hmm. he would play acoustic guitar a lot and then he would do this thing where he'd tap and pluck i remember oh. him showing me that and uh yeah it's yeah. cool yeah yeah it's yeah. like a cheap toast and a bar <laughs> yeah. right it's a poor man's toss and a toss yeah, and exactly. a yeah. Yeah. yeah um uh yeah and then uh the bass also comes in is the bass doubling what the guitar is doing yeah Oh, well, in the gent, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the big, that's the big ingredient for gent. I remember when I found that out. Yeah. For the longest time, you know, being into Meshuggah, like I wasn't sure if the bass was an octave lower, but actually uh, the, the the ingredient is, is that the bass and the guitars are, are the same. Same, same octave. Wow. Same octave. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, that's a nice little gem that you you gave us there. I, I was yeah, wondering yeah. about that because I, I guess... I mean, is that? Yeah. I, yeah. I got that from... Uh, I, what was it? Uh, it was when... I, um, what do you call it? Yeah, the guitar tech of Meshuggah. Yeah, there's like mm. an interview of him. Oh, got talking it. Talking about that. And it's like on a lot of the songs um on the album obzen mm -hmm. uh by Meshuggah because they, they do have songs where they're an octave apart but on pretty much i think most of obzen it's like it's 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 like that so what happens is is that they're all the same pitch but the bass occupies the lower frequency and the guitar naturally because when you put like an overdrive pedal on guitar it, it's it's a kind of a natural high shelf right isn't it right so you know so they're, they're occupying like the gritty high end and the bass is like still gritty, but low end. So you just got this huge, <laughs> huge sound. And it's yeah. so rewarding, you know, like, because yeah. you're essentially like, you're kind of triple tracking if you want. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you double track the guitars. Yeah. Or sometimes in Meshuggah's case, they might like quad track and then you have the wow. bass in the middle. But when you get it all and you've recorded them all and you've got it all like uh, tight and everything, you oh hear it back, gosh. it's just like super rewarding yeah wow yeah it sounds massive um yeah and it yeah it makes a lot of sense that it's like you know the the natural tone of the bass and those big fat strings even though you're playing in the same octave as the guitar it's going to sound yeah. different and yeah, yeah that's that is cool yeah. um so uh let's talk a little bit about about jonathan lumberg yeah. i mean yeah. how did, you know at what point did you because i know you said that you initially thought about just playing everything yourself and then and then at, at some point you you decided you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna call make a call to jonathan lundberg and have him do the drums on this how did that come about yeah so like again i think i already thought of that when i when i th i think i was like at this point before i even started like this final version of not important i was like thinking to myself thinking like oh what songs do i have in my hard drive that you know could be done and i remember seeing that remembering the lyrics and being like yeah all right come on all right let's do this and and then i and i remember having the idea i was like i was like yeah okay exactly i, I see what it is now i've got to make it groovy i've got to make yeah. forget the cajon okay that's that's cool and everything but you know it's gonna be so much better as like right as a like kind of band kind of thing yeah. you know with drums yeah. And I was like, yeah, um, totally. and as you know, I've already been doing, um, collaborating quite a bit with Jonathan and I was yeah. just like, yeah, J Jonathan would be great for this. Like he's, he's, he's the man, man. He's oh the man. man. I I'll tell you, man, you could just do like, you could do a video of just the sections that you're playing where Jonathan is playing along with you on uh, those there is some tricky stuff going on and uh, yeah and if yeah you saw my reaction so uh there's that one section that's a breakdown i, I think it comes like maybe after the chorus or after a verse or something but it's like boom, ga, boom, ga. there's like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. one little section that only appears yeah. once in the song i freaking love that i love yeah. that that whole thing right there, the the shift in the in the rhythm there, the how it breaks up, you know, like it does, and then it comes back. You know, I can't entirely remember who came up with that. I don't know if it was me or him, because <laughs> it could have been him. Yeah, I don't yeah. Want to, like. I don't want to be like. I'm, I'm, I'm like. I'm not trying to take credit for anything. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just no. Can't remember because I re I programmed the drums. Yeah. I just can't. I, but you know, I think that might have been him. That might have been him who came up with that idea. Yeah. Um. Which was, and I remember thinking that was super cool. And then I remember, yeah, I, th I think it's pretty. I'm, I'm like ninety percent sure, ninety eight percent sure that it was him who came up with that. Because uh -huh. I like made these like um, effects that sort of go around him. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and I mean, and what's so cool about that is that he i think he sent me two takes of the whole <laughs> i uh -huh. think he sent me one take just to try out and then uh, and then we spoke a bit and then we agreed like we'll just try one more and, and i think that was like from the first 
me using the first take, you know, so I use a bit of first take, a bit of second take, just for the variations. Did and you I have to go back and retrack? How do you, how do you integrate with him? Because like you gave him like a rough track and like, how do you work with somebody like that? I'm really curious to know, like if, if you're giving him Ooh. like the, like, let's say the drums that you programmed as a, as a, here, here's the idea behind this. And then you give him like the track without the drums so that he can play with it. Or like, what, how does that whole thing go down with the integration? How do you do that? I suppose you mean like you're asking if I like sort of tag along to things that he's playing. Yeah. Like, Does he play keeping like my original instrumental and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. Do you have to, cause once you've laid down I your mean... stuff and you hand it off, he may come yeah. up with some other rhythmic ideas and say, Hey, I'm doing mm -hmm. this here, but it won't match what you did. So will he bring, he gives you the tracks back and then you might have to go back and retrack something to match what he did. Cause you're yeah, not in the I mean, same it's... room, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have done things like that, but for the most part, I, I think I keep most of what I recorded, though. Okay. Um, I think there are some things that I might punch in, mm -hmm. which is okay. Like the tone doesn't. I think all the guitars stayed the same. Okay. Okay. Example, Great. Great. The bass might have changed a bit, but again, I, I, I was kind of like, uh, I am. For that particular song, I was a bit picky about how the chorus should be because I had right. like a specific, I wanted it to be like a specific groove. I was pretty happy with the bass, like yeah. groove. So yeah. I wanted I wanted it to match that as, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so I think that might have been that, like he sort of just like, sort of just like went for it and like did his thing. And it's like most of it was great. And I, th but I think I remember it was like the chorus well i just said to him oh yeah could you just make it a little bit could you just match the yeah like, i'm playing this on the bass here could you just match that and it, like thankfully like he's so cool wow <laughs> he's so easy going wow. it's crazy he's like yeah sure man no worries <laughs> it's some intricate <laughs> stuff going on rhythmically yeah. like in the parts that you wrote for, for guitar and bass there's some interesting stuff going on and i'm listening to him like match all of those i mean it sounds like and i'm not sure because sometimes things can sound like an illusion in the rhythm mm -hmm. but it almost sounds like there are some short measures uh you know that it, it's not it's not all in four is that did that happen like you know awesome. because some of the timing was just like surprising to me uh-huh yeah i do i do like doing that sometimes i mean i, I it will only be if i sort of uh realizing what i might do on some songs you know because that is mostly four four but it's mm -hmm. a possibility that i i have like a couple of bars of two four just so it yeah. you know yeah it feels right yeah you know i think on something like that typically i i wouldn't see it as necessary to add in like a crazy time signature unless it was really necessary yeah you know because yeah. I, I i kind of i have this idea of like um I, I especially this kind of song like the idea it probably doesn't come across but it's a little bit like i don't know latin or brazilian or yeah inspired you know yes on the bass right in the chorus right you know all kind of like you know, a lot of the emphasis is on like the the second sixteenth note sort of thing. Yeah. You know, to give yeah. it that little bounce. Yeah. So, so for that, I want like a like a steady pulse. You know, so so if I'm gonna do anything like that, it's like it's like a two four or one four, just to mm. just so it, just so I can keep it rolling. Yeah. In, you know, in, in an unexpected way, but you, you know what right. I mean. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, there is that uh, Latin. I mean, I definitely caught that when I heard it. It's like yeah. it's got that Latin feel, which cracks me up because you've got you've got that three D model dancing of you <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, all yeah. tweaked with with like the wings because it's like the thing's not rendered right because I think it's all like you know you you got all this weird weird uh, render, rendering that, that was that was your contribution <laughs> that was that was when you asked me to render it for you and I gave it yeah. back to you and it had that weird <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> it's all it's all connected your arm is connected to your hip and uh, oh man it's yeah just so funny but yeah the dancing was so so perfect for that i was, I was happy to see that in there because that that was so funny to have that uh you know it fit perfectly with the yeah i mean this is the thing the rhythm. i like just uh, in case like any anyone's wondering like i i asked jeff to um to render something for me because i was again like in the stages of like thinking like what am i gonna do i had like a good chunk of the video done but i was like what am i gonna do for the rest of it like you know i want it to look cool like what's a good like easy way so i started like trying to download unreal engine but then unreal engine it's, it's like my mac pro is like the version is is just a bit too old for um unreal engine so but i like managed to find a way to create like a 3d model of myself so without jeff hit like yeah seeing the video or anything like i sort of cryptically like asked you like hey can you yeah can you just render this for me? Like, don't ask any questions. <laughs> and, then, and because I have like this guitar, it couldn't like, it couldn't uh, render it properly. So it just yeah. looks like I've got some like huge deformity right. coming out of my body. Like, yeah. Yeah, because there are these control points on the model. Yeah. Like when you're creating the, the model of it, it's asking for, for discrete control points that you have to match up. And it's yeah. like, okay, uh, put the control point here, here, so that it yeah. knows where the points of pivot are and, and all of that, and head here and here. And some of them were like not quite matching up right. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess that's where it goes. So when I got to, <laughs> when I got done putting all the control points on it and let it fly, it just did the weirdest thing. And I oh, I I just sat here, I was laughing my ass off because there's a bunch of animations that you could choose from. You know, like doing, ah, you know, this kind of stuff or yeah. dancing or doing a sword, you know, because people use this for, for games. So yeah. I went through a bunch of these and then I came across the dancing one and I passed it back to you. I'm like, oh, you got to see this one. This, this is <laughs> this is it. This is awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, um, yeah I was going to say, mentioned lastly with Jonathan Lumberg, he, um, he played in your Fix You video as yeah, well, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you used them for for other stuff, uh, other videos, or is that it's just those two so far? Just, with just, him, with him. just those two, and um, but like uh, it really feels like it's 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 a really good feeling because like it's like I, when I started Skeb, I had this idea of like yeah, okay, so Skeb is me, you know, and I could feature mm -hmm. um, other musicians maybe and but like mostly drummers because that's where i kind of need the help it's quite quite oh. nice to have the help on that but right. with right. jonathan I, I mean you know we've been sp speaking about it and it's just i i don't know i just really trust him yeah. you know and i really feel like it's a really good partnership that we've got going on and you know he he, he, he said likewise you know because i'm helping him uh record some uh, music for his project as well ah. at the moment which is uh, awesome just really, really <laughs> it's really crazy like oh, the rhythms man. he comes up with is ridiculous but oh man he's such um, a such a great player yeah yeah he's just he's just great can we he, talk he's... can we talk a, a little bit about um uh, can we name drop a little bit with uh who you not too long ago got to do a session oh, yeah. with you know what i'm talking about I <laughs> I think so. Jonathan, you, you um a special bass player from a, a special band. Yeah. It was a trio. Yeah. So yeah. so so yeah. uh so Skeb um not too long ago did um I guess it was a video, right? It was it was for a video. Was it a live performance or what was the occasion that you guys were brought together for? Oh, no, oh, you mean all of us, like, like the band? The band, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I have been on the same recording as Henrik before. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about yeah, Henrik um, Linder, Hen Henrik Linder, yeah. the bass player for Dirty Loops. Yeah. Um, yeah, for for Jonathan's music again, because they're like yeah. good friends. Um, yeah, and yeah, it was uh, Jonathan's uh, premiere gig. Which was oh, awesome. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was really, really good. Was Carl oh. on guitar? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
What a smoking yes. lineup, dude. And you were just, you were the vocals, right? You weren't, because I know you're just, a multi-instrumentalist as well, but you, they got you as the vocalist, right? Yeah, like, like kind of uh, guest vocal. There was more than, there wasn't just me. There was um, two other like uh, amazingly talented vocalists as well who mm. who have like sung on his songs as well. Yeah. They were yeah. great. And they're so cool as well. And yeah, um, and, yeah, and I just um sang on the last two songs basically and so i got to like watch uh the rest of the band play for the for the whole gig you know and My they're, God. They're, they're just all of them just killing it yeah I, like christian crafling the uh keyboardist as well he's like the backup oh keyboardist yeah keyboardist as well. yeah yeah so he was he was playing there too there was like there was a horn section there was you know wow um uh jonathan's other half who's a fantastic violinist mm. was there Christina. when do we get to see this is this video getting released or what i don't know and uh i i i'd um i kind of i'm I'd be a bit careful talking about it yeah because, yeah but, yeah but ba basically i don't think jonathan will mind me saying this but uh, i think he was um he was done dirty by the venue uh sound engineers oh apparently they were just very very um <laughs> as carl put it carl's in carl's words staggeringly incompetent <laughs> so <laughs> apparently it was like a huge mess and uh it was like no oh, they, 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 they messed up they messed up the sound they messed up the the in ears and basically <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I I was watching them and I was like, this is awesome. Like, you guys are amazing. But right. for them, like, right. they, they were really, like, not... Yeah, Jonathan was not happy about it, basically. Yeah. Um, And uh, to the point, I mean, he's getting a... He's he's getting a free gig out of it. Oh. He paid for the whole thing. Oh, you know? my gosh. You know? Wow. You know, so he financed the whole thing, and it was, and it kind of got a bit ruined because, oh. basically, in 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 their words, they were kind of saying how like everyone was just on stage was not having a good time. Oh, but yeah. Apart from myself, I didn't know because I didn't have any um, in ears or anything like that. Oh, so, oh, really? So I was, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that's too bad. That um... yeah, it is. It is too bad. Um, but yeah, but. Uh, but but hopefully there'll be there'll be another one. I'm well, sure there will be. Yeah, it'd be cool if they called you back to do to do more of that. Yeah, yeah. With those guys. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that you've posted this and, and the video is doing pretty well, man. I was I was happy to see that you're getting some views on it. And um yeah, it's uh it's it's nice that, that people are are interested in in, in it and, and that uh um you know the fruits of your labor. It's always you know it's yeah. This stuff is so hard. It's it's so much work, uh, and it's it's a labor of love. But still, it's something that you give your time to, and it's nice to know that it resonates. That it's a gift to other people. That it resonates. That it has some sort of an impact. As an artist, that's our currency. That's what makes us feel good. I think is is being able to give and make other people happy. I mean, I think that that that's true for a lot of artists not so much about what we get yeah. back whether monetary or with flattery or whatever i i think a lot of us want just to make people happy just to make people yeah enjoy yeah. enjoy something that doesn't exist and um and that's you know also a reason why we write is because we have this certain you know, eclectic taste and all these things we've listened to our whole lives that rattle rattles around in our heads. And, and then we want to hear a song, but that song doesn't exist. It's not out there. We don't have, there isn't a song that exists that, that satisfies all those crazy things that we love. So that's why we write and we that's write. Good. That's a great point. Yeah. Like, like, uh, like writing, writing what you want to hear right yeah yeah that you haven't heard yeah like if you, if you like striving for that is yeah there's something really nice about that and i feel like all my favorite artists do that you yeah know? 
yeah that's... and that's a great way to look at it as well because that's like genreless you know it right. doesn't mean that you, you can do that in the right. like in a pop way you know like because it's so it's like when you say that you almost have the danger of thinking like oh it's going to be some esoteric music but not at all like you could do something you know um i'm listening to uh I'm, I'm so into this artist called bill murray at the moment and it's very it's so catchy pop but with but it's like gent uh, oh. and, and and it's like it's 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 with country elements as well oh. so, they're calling That's it like, so cool. Yeah, they're calling it like Yalcor, which is just, <laughs> it's just great. And I love it. And I love it because it's so, so catchy cool. and it's so heavy and punchy. And, you know, I can imagine like that's exactly what he's doing, you know? Right. So it doesn't have to be some, yeah, like I said, super yeah. esoteric right. underground thing that right. no one can get into. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. I think that yeah but and i was gonna say you know it, 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 it's an interesting thing I, I, so I, I don't know people will think i'm i'm, I'm messed up uh, for <laughs> saying this or you know getting a glimpse into my messed up psyche <laughs> but like you know i was so i was so getting towards the end of doing this video mm. and whilst i was doing the video you know i was having so much fun because yeah. a huge part of it was like there was some reverse engineering going on, you know, solving patterns, you know, really trying to, again, like I said, I'm within my limitations, you know, so it's a lot of choices. It's like, what can I get away with sort of thing? Yeah. You know, and still and have it still look appeasing and, and, yeah. and tell a story. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that was one thing I really started to realize like halfway yeah. through, I was trying like a lot of different tricks and stuff. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That's a lot of tricks, but like, Okay, but me, I, I kind of realized, like, no, I've got to tell a story, though, because right, right. the song is like that. But anyway, so I was having so much fun. I get towards the end. I've got, like, a, a gig uh, in in Stockholm, and which I'm I'm so happy I get to do. But a part of me was like, like, yeah. oh, I got to go. Yeah. Like, you know, I have to, yeah. like, the fact that I have to stop, so I'm flying. Yeah. I come back. I get right. it done. I'm so, and I'm thinking about getting it out. Uh, but when I get to the, when I get it all done... There was a part of me, I started thinking to myself, I was like, actually, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to release this. Oh, no way. Because, because, because I was just thinking, I don't want, like, if no one likes it, that's going to ruin the whole thing for me. And I don't want that experience to be ruined. Dude, you know that, what I mean? oh my gosh, that is a common, that really is a common feeling that a lot of people get a lot of musicians get that don't want to yeah. ruin it don't want to speak it don't want to speak yeah. it because you just you yeah. you want to keep it inside and and because you're happy with what you did and you don't want the influence of somebody to crap on it or say something that is going to stick in your head and it, yeah god sure yeah there you go it's like oh, fuck, oh i've wasted fucking months yeah because <laughs> someone like <laughs> crapped on it yeah <laughs> But I started joking about that towards the end. I was like, I called Jonathan. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, let's do another, let's do another video and waste our lives away. Yeah. <laughs> let's waste some more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, yeah, but he, yeah, yeah. So um, I thank you for, for saying that because uh, it's good to know that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I just, the good thing is, is that um, now, uh because I find that quite stressful. And I, again, I, it's probably something I need to get better at, but like just after releasing it, I was like concerned yeah. about it. Yep. And and now, you know, a couple of weeks have gone by. Yeah. Now I feel detached from it and I feel, I feel good. Yeah. You know, I, I feel relaxed. Like I don't have to worry about it. Anymore. Oh, well, um, I better let you go, dude. I, I am so grateful grateful for you sitting with me and chatting. It's always great. You, you know, you and I yeah, can just course. go for hours talking about anything. So, you know, um, for sure, man. definitely, yeah. definitely have to let yeah. you get back. But, um, man, thank you for just kind of cracking open this song and video for us to have a little insight into your thought process with it. And I, I just absolutely love it. I can't wait for more. It's not a waste of time. Don't ever feel like it is. You got to do more <laughs> videos, more music, you know. Um, 
yeah yeah well thanks thanks for being interested you know that's yeah. uh, it's so cool um yeah. yeah to see you to very nicely pick out things in the in the music and yeah you know, yeah it's fun things. dude so, yeah. cool. all right dude Great good time. seeing you man we'll talk to you again you too, soon man. all right cool all right, see you, man. All. all right brother yeah, bye -bye.